and welcome to Who Corner to Corner podcast. I'm Jeff, and as always, I'm joined by Paul. Good evening. That's me. Good evening to you, you, Jeff. How are you, and, mate? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. And we're joined by your daughter, Freya. That's this one here. Hello. That's that one there, if you're watching on YouTube. And at last, at last. after a year, we have new Doctor Who episodes oh. to talk about. Uh, and you know what? We thought that uh, it was going to be really difficult getting through a year with no uh, mm. new content <laughs> I know. to oh, we talk got so about on the podcast. Ranked up. But we managed it, and now we've got more stuff to put out than the, these episodes have frankly come along at the wrong time for yeah, our schedule. Yeah, we're to, waiting for another another six weeks, really, aren't we? Because yeah. we've got six weeks ahead kind of banked up now. Yeah, uh, so so cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Excellent. No, but that's good. So, that's a testament to the whole like wonder and depth and breadth of Doctor Who that we've had. That's it. So much media, so many titles, so many brilliant things to do with Doctor Who to we talk have. about, right? Yes. Wow. And badges. So... And you've got badges, yeah. I'm not wearing mine tonight. I uh, foolishly that forgot, but you're both amazing. rocking your subscriber-only badges there. Doctor Who Corner to Corner podcast badge, available to subscribers only. If you want to subscribe, then get in touch. It's easy. <laughs> I don't know. What the, what's that voice, Freya? Uh, mean, the the, the uh, metallic shine of them doesn't quite come across here, and it certainly won't come across in audio. So uh, they are metallic check them out. shining. Mm. They are. So... Uh, we're here to talk about the Star Beast, <gasps> the grand return of yes! Russell T and Tennant, Dave, David T and Catherine T. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of tea. Of tea. Lot of Let's spill there, the tea. Mm, so, the um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I'm sure anyone listening will know, um, this was the start of the new era of the 60th uh, celebrations as well. Uh, David Tennant is back as the 14th Doctor, uh, which is really just 10 plus 4. Uh, and um, <laughs> this this was the Star <laughs> Beast, already, which was... Um, uh, well, the plot was um, an alien spaceship. Well, you, you think it's crashed, don't you? That was, you know, what, what uh, you're led to believe. And, mm-hmm. and then, uh, I don't need to repeat it, because I'm sure anyone listening has watched. So, well, let's hopefully, get into hopefully it. they've watched. Otherwise, this is one big, massive... <laughs> yeah, stop listening. Come back in about an hour. Come back later. Yeah, yeah. go watch yeah. it. Go watch point, it yeah. now. Do it, <laughs> and then come here, and then you won't be spoiled. So it's yeah. all good. And, yeah, and yeah, listen yeah. to yeah. our yeah. thoughts on it. So, Indeed. what did what did you two think? Right, you're just straight in like that. Then, what do we think about <laughs> it? Because that, that's that's how we all start. It's been a long time since we've actually looked at a brand new episode, and yeah. Jeff has gone. What do you think? Because you know we, we're always just and like. I go, trying to come down from it and trying to process everything but i mean okay so rather than let's go what i think let's see if we can arrive at some kind of idea um for this so firstly it's it's based on a comic strip story from 1979 or something like is it it that long ago wow oh yeah it's like one of the very first doctor who weekly magazine as it was then um, back when it was owned by marvel um, you know, it's, it's one of the first stories. There was, there was the Iron Legion, there was Star Beast, the Dogs of Doom, you know, those really early um, uh, Pat Mills and Dave Gibbons stories, which are fantastic. And Star Beast is great. I think it ran a, over about five or six episodes. Did little nine year old you love it? A little nine-year-old me absolutely loved it. A little 20-year-old me loved it as well. 30-year-old me loved it. 40-year-old me loved it. And 11 year old me loves it. Also, it's 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 a great story. And and I I you know when it when it when when something is based on something that you love, you're always gonna look for the differences, right? And yeah. there were some significant differences, but the core of the story is right there. And I love that. And I love the fact that they credited um, Pat and Dave on it as well. Mm, yeah, really prominently writing. as well. I mean, mm. the, these guys, I mean, you know, those two guys there, when they wrote comic strips for, for Doctor Who, they were writing some some absolute legendary titles or, you know, stories within the comic the, the comic history of Doctor Who that have become legendary. They were great when they launched. They were already at high benchmark and they've never been beaten. You know, I think they're just extraordinary. And of course, the, the guys also went on to write for, you know, pretty much created 2000 AD, you know, in its, mm, in its yeah. early days as well. So, you know, and they've always been deeply embedded in British comic culture, if you like. So, you know, to have their story brought to the screen 
is is tremendous. It's it's yeah, it must it's, must be sixtieth. Must be fantastic for them, you know, to have um, you know written that, created it, you know, oh, yeah, forty these, odd these years ago. Legends. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny yeah. to to see it on screen. So okay, so. Mm. Okay, so from that perspective, I, I love the story. You know, the, the story is a classic. I'm always going to love it unless they really mess around with it and, you know, and then it becomes something else and you take it on it, on its own terms. So the, the story for me was great. But then, of course, I'm talking from, a, from it like, a, you know, someone who's quite familiar with it. But someone who isn't familiar with the story, how did you feel, you know, with the whole beat the meat thing? There you go. That was it. That was pretty quiet. I know. Stunned silence. Stunned <laughs> silence. But what about you, Jeff? Because I take it you haven't read it, or, or have you? Uh, no, I've I've never read it. But um, mm. what's what's your uh, thoughts? I, I became aware of it. Uh, you know, once the um, uh, someone in a costume was was packed on set all the, all those years ago now for mm. when they when they filmed it. Um, I, yeah, I really liked it. I thought, uh, and and also I kind of I'd gathered that you know it starts out cute, but actually turns out to be a bit of an arsehole. Um, and uh, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> straight in. Okay, uh, so we're giving a language warning for this podcast. Then. Yeah, arsehole. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I really Who, liked. Who you what? It. Beat the meat. Beat the meat was, a, was an arsehole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Well, oh, okay. yeah. It turns evil, doesn't it? You know. Um, it was and, always uh, I, evil. Reveal revealed to be yes evil. that's yeah that's yes yeah. it kind of um, plays on the et thing almost isn't it you know sort of cute alien found in a toy mm, cupboard there's, mm. there's that kind of thing but this is pre-et in the comments that's what so. uh did you say that the other day you, you might have done yeah or i've certainly mm. heard that um but yeah I, I thought it looked great i couldn't work out whether um it, it was all cg or a costume and then um you know when it was evil the face i think was animated because mm. um i saw a yeah, picture was, of Big Russell, team. yeah, uh, there was a picture of Russell with a horrific rubber meep uh, stand in that, that he put out on um, Instagram the other day. Right. So I wondered whether it didn't have any hair to it or anything. So you know how, like, um, they have a stunt rocket, you know, on, on Guardians of the Galaxy to, to fill in for, you know, where the CG thing will go. And it's almost like a horrible looking blue uh, rocket thing, you know, um, the raccoon. You'll have to look out to see what I mean. But this is what the meep thing. Look like. right. Uh, if you're listening, these two look confused because they obviously haven't seen. What if I'm if you're listening about. and you know what Jeff's talking about, then please let us know. Please write in yeah. or call in on oh one hundred twenty four twenty four seventy eight ninety nine ninety nine 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 one. Uh, well, it was on Instagram anyway, but yeah, I thought it looked great, and um, you know, you you can. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about the money uh, later, but you can the tell money, show me the money. 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 Um, but yeah, I like the character. I thought the yeah, vocal work was really good. Um, I actually watched this episode with my kids tonight. Uh, oh, did you? I oh, was well, Yeah. Um, so um, there was, you know, quite a lot of questions. Why? Why is its fingers so long? Uh, yeah, look how sharp its teeth are. Yeah, they looked a bit like. Um, uh, sort of ETs, uh, you know, long phone uh, home, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Time the first time I was like, that's like different, and then mm. just mm. what you think it would it's look kind like. of a weird sort of handy thing, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, th- I think I think my kids quite liked it. You know, uh, there was. Um, I mean, part Did of they freak out when they... the teeth came in there. Or, or uh, no, not really. They they um they, they I think they were sort of surprised that it had become evil and they were saying its eyes have changed now and mm. you know they they sort of noticed that um but I think part of me wondered whether they had the star beast in it because there's been you know particularly with Disney stuff um you know quite a push for the kind mm. of cute little things like baby yeah. Groot and, and um Grogu and stuff Disney but, does uh, look like the cute thing, yeah it? The cute alien but it, it's thing. not a bad thing at, at all mm. you know but you know with part of uh, I guess the mission for this new stuff is is to sort of appeal to a younger audience again, like it did, you know, back in two thousand and five. Who many of who, uh, you know, are now grown up and watching again. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think like my son, he's nine. He liked the the wraith, wraith warriors. You know, when they Wrath were sort of in, well, yeah, I couldn't pronounce it right. But when they had their insect wings <laughs> out and stuff, and um, mm-hmm. you know, they were flying. He thought they were yeah, cool. So, good. you know, that, that element of it, you mm. know, appeals to, to them. And, um, yeah. you know, so, yeah, they enjoyed that stuff. So, yeah, I, I liked the uh, yeah. the Beep the Meep plot line. It was it was fun. Mm. And it was it, I quite liked seeing this little sort of, I, I've got um, a guinea pig here, actually. It's called Poppy, oh, and it's it's white. And, uh, Poppy. Uh, oh, and um, Poppy. The, other, the other one's called Rainbow Sparkles. 
Um, I didn't name that one. Yes, um, but <laughs> Poppy looked a bit like Beep the Meeps, so seeing this thing right. sitting there going, um, yeah. um, you know, whatever it was shouting when it was in its cockpit and stuff, you know, um, calibrate engine and launch the yeah, drill yeah, thing. Yeah. I was, uh, I see, it was so kind Imagine of it. It was... silly comic dialogue, and I was thinking of, <laughs> of the guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed all of that. It was really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's all cool. So also, um, what did you think of? Let's just get the beginning bit out of the way. So the opening titles—they're all brand new. The new theme oh. music. Now the music I haven't heard. I know the music was released like about four or five weeks ago, wasn't it? It was mm-hmm. released mm-hmm. last month. Yeah, when I did it. The, when yeah, that's it. Or and something, as soon yeah. as I saw it on on social media, I I just muted everything to do is with that's the That's mm-hmm. favorite thing. When it a is my new favorite thing. thing One thing I really like to look at is is the new the new theme, the new uh, titles, yeah. all of that, and I want it to be i want to experience it right here on the night properly but- yeah I, I must admit i don't like um you know looking at clips and things or mm. uh watching uh you know or listen to bootlegged um you know versions of things i, I no, want exactly. to experience it i watch a trailer yeah. an mm. officially released trailer but i like to try and sort of experience things as they should be uh i did listen to the theme when it was released i listened okay. to it on my phone and i felt dirty for doing it like that um Baseball. It, it was disgraceful. You're right. Um, so tonight, uh, I've, I've got to be honest, I didn't sort of take it in fully because I was thinking, mm. oh, wow, you can see they've s- s- spent a huge load of money on these tiles <laughs> um, <laughs> with the TARDIS flying around and, and you know, blasting yeah. out it through. It like bigger. It did. Like it, wider. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It was oh. it was much bigger. I mean, um, you know, most of the others. You know, the TARDIS is flying through the time vortex, and that, that's basically it. You know, I remember with mm. the Moffat stuff, the big change was the lightning blast hitting it and stuff, you know. Um, but this has got a lot more, you know, movement to it and, and scale. So I thought the titles look, yeah, you know, it had different shots of it moving in it, you know. Yeah, it was yeah. Was like, okay, it. yeah. So it, but I'll tell you what struck me was the fact it started with the, with the folks on the light on top of the police mm. box. And then yeah. the police box kind of spins around. Didn't yeah. Matt Smith's um, opening title start pretty much the same as that? And then the whole thing Maybe. kind of disappears in a very cloudy time yeah. tunnel thing. It, it struck me as very much like that. And then we get a kind of horizontal move, don't we? So we have the thing yeah. sort of moving sideways. We see the corner of the police box <laughs> dragging through, like as if it's surfing on yes. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like surfing on the water of the time vortex. I, I thought it was a bit... <laughs> Maybe I was less excited by it, shall we say? I, I, I actually thought it was a bit shit, to be honest. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, Language. I How, I, it it was you... good, but I, I was kind of expecting something a little bit. Actually, well, you know, when you say it's dynamic, which it was, but it kind of felt a little bit, a little bit dull, really. Because, like, I you suppose... know, we've seen the Matt Smith stuff, right? So it opens the same as the Matt Smith, right? I mm. feel like it has lots of stuff gone. I feel like in some of them, you have like even just the names like going through stuff, and there's more like through yeah, and around. There was, that. So the or names, is it literally just boom? They, they did come up at an angle, didn't they? And yeah, the I, don't know, I feel like it, them. The, I can't explain it, but like it moves more, whereas this was kind of just like. Yeah, it was very forward. And well, it was forward. There was some down movement. There was some horizontal movement, and it was all over pretty quick. Like I think it was like yes, that's true. I, I, it, it, well, it, I was, it was pink. It was a lot of pink, yes. Which there was nice, a nice colouring in it. Nice. Yeah, and then I, the logo yeah, I, comes up, and it didn't seem to me like the logo really belonged it there. Matched the setup. It didn't. It, it looked like mm. it had been slapped on top of it. You know, when you get a PowerPoint, you get a really nice graphic. You know, you get a beautiful image in the background that's like yeah. really, really super four K resolution. And then you slap a clip art on it or something. Yeah. That sounds awful. Because <laughs> uh, I love the diamond logo, but you know, I just thought, well, okay, it, you know, maybe. But that is, I'm going gonna, gonna to be honest, that is probably my only disappointment of the whole thing. And that's very much a me thing. So that mm. is purely on me, you know. And obviously, it's just an opinion. I'm not saying it was rubbish. I thought it was, but I just, yeah, I, I was a bit disappointed by it. I think that's the thing. Yeah, you know, I liked it. it looked cool. My my kids mm. were quite taken by it. You know, they wanted to know what it was, and so trying to explain to them, you know, yeah. that it's it's the time force. <laughs> That's the time hard. vortex as used in every Doctor Who story yeah. since forever. 
<laughs> it has been represented in many different ways, from a black and white squirrely thing to black and white wibbly things to very colourful diamond, diamond shaped and slit scan things to Starfields and beyond. Yes. Yeah. Is that how you explain it? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is in that words. exact voice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Anyway. Okay. So enough of my stuff there then. So back to the story. So we've got a lot going on. So we've got the, the Beat the Meat thing based on the comic strip. But then woven into that is the whole Donna thing as well, isn't it? With the, the meta crisis. So we get mm. that opening sequence where we've got the Doctor and Donna alternatively telling their sides of the stories for anyone who for some weird reason hasn't been watching since 2000 and Nine, ten, whenever it well, was. Like my kids. Like so, your kids, um, exactly. Why haven't they been watching it since 2005? I think they were born then. That's no I wasn't born then. No Do excuse. I need to explain that? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what did I think of that beginning bit? Um, kind of was necessary. necessary? I, well, I, now see, I, I did enjoy this a, a lot, mm. but... Um, I felt I that uh, if you didn't know the mm. show, and this is your jumping on point, you get what's going on. You well, I suppose because yeah, e- even despite that opening, you think I, I you, think even so with because that, you think it's difficult. Now, to... uh, yes, I think so a little bit. So my wife watched as well. We all watched. <gasps> so did you, Mum? Yeah, Mum did watch. And it. she, she... Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was my wife actually. <laughs> uh, so she was a bit like. Um, uh, you know, if you if you don't know the show, you, you won't mm. know what's going on. And my kids, you know, so the girls are five, um, and obviously they've got no idea what's going on. But you know, I was having to try to explain what's coming. You know, why is Donna going orange now, and, and what's mm. going on, and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, that's because they are young and they don't understand, and, and they also have very little. You know, they were confused that the doctor wasn't a blonde woman anymore. Oh, I did like it when he showed the. Um, mm. Psychic paper to um, uh, what's the uh, Sean? Yeah. Is it? Sean. Yeah. yeah. And he said it says it says mistress of, uh, mis- of the yeah. knowledge. You know, right, yeah. <laughs> keep up. He said. Um, so yeah, so yeah. I, I yeah I you know I really enjoyed it all, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I I did feel that even despite that uh, exposition dump at the beginning, um, you know, as a new mm-hmm. viewer potentially I would have been a bit like. Uh, you know, I've obviously missed something here, um, but so did, I think. Did your the, wife get it then, or did, did she? Was it over? Uh, well, she knew enough to, you know, to to get it, but um, you know, she she was saying, you know, why is Donna? Why can't she remember and stuff? And you know, it needed explaining in a bit more, you know, detail. Mm. But I think the uh, beep but did stuff. Did say that he wiped her memory? Yes, it, it, it did, but uh, you know, I think it was quite a, a heavy part of it all. You know, yeah. um, you know, in the episode, um, and but I think the beep, the meep stuff, kind of, you know, it, it that forms such a massive chunk of it that mm. it works as, a, as an adventure, you know, on it on its own like that. On you that know, level, so, yeah. I, I, you know, whilst I don't know whether that side of it, you know, works mm. for a new viewer, I think the rest of it does. So I think that's fine. Yeah. You know? I, th- I think maybe the important things are kind of transmitted. You might not know the whole nature of the meta crisis and all that gobbledygooky stuff, but mm. I think the important thing out of all of that, which you do remember, which I think your mum tweaked, wasn't it, was that Donna can't be allowed yeah. to remember the doctor. And she was, yeah. my was like, oh, so does her mum know? It's like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because that was fun the way um, Sylvia was, was, you know, like, you know, prancing yeah. around trying to hide yeah, the doctor yeah. from yeah. her and stuff. Um, yeah. No, then, you don't know him. You've never seen him before. Yeah, no, yeah. no and, idea. And she <laughs> she kept going. Like, um, what man? <laughs> oh no, Granddad doesn't talk about aliens. No, 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 no. There's no aliens. Yeah. And I like the way um, uh, Donna dropped the uh, the boxes and didn't see the spaceship crashing at the beginning. Yeah. And oh, that was good. Still, everything. still missing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I. Everyone else is up there with their phones, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> mom, mom. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I got slightly confused because um, mm. when they were in the unit van and, and the doctor was saying, why did you give your money away? And she said, oh, I wanted to, you know, mm. to be like you. And I thought, oh, hang on, did I hear that right? Because she's not supposed to remember him. And then later I sort of got the feeling, well, she said there was some mumbo-jumbo about she did have some memory of she him, didn't she? she about him. 
Was it? Yeah. Yeah. At so, the start, she was saying how she had dreams, and mm. the dreams are becoming more like frequent. Yeah. So there, there was a, a recollection about him, wasn't there? Oh, she, was, she was like, "There's things. something." That was it. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Yeah. yeah what kind of missed, like, she said, isn't she? It's not the same. Yeah, I know. Kind of that like was quite moving. That to bit. See Amy. And yeah. then, yeah. like at the start, and then obviously he isn't there, and everyone thinks she's mad. But mm, she's yes. like, that's, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. But... Paul, you um, are not a big fan of the way she, she had her memory wiped, are you? No, I didn't. I, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was a bit of a cheap ending. So I'm, I'm actually quite a fan of of, of seeing that storyline now resolved. Yeah. Mm. Because I, you know, I, I just hate memory wipes at, at the end of stories, like yeah. you know, especially with someone so so vital and integral to the stories of Donna. Someone, you know, we, it's very rare that we actually get characters in Doctor Who who change over the course of their time, yeah, yeah. Or, or that we see such a profound change in their behaviour and ways of thinking as we ever did with Donna. You know, mm. she literally became a better person before our yeah, life. Yeah. We, we're along the journey with that, and for that to be taken away, not just from her, but also from us as a viewer, mm. you know, it kind of it's, it's like a big slap in the face, and it's not a pleasant. Yeah. One. That's what it's I not, felt. And it, it it was in a very sad and heartbreaking. Um, yeah, but it felt it, cheap. You know that. Yeah, to me anyway, in, you know, it's in sad the years, and heartbreaking. It's like, how can we make this sad and heartbreaking? Oh, I yeah. know. Let's remove her memories. That'll have the morning tears. I think tears. it's okay if it's like a side character or something, or like a minor character. Mm. Like I remember, yeah, you can show. But in Supergirl, if they ever have someone like come in and do like part of the story, it's like, oh, sorry, you can't remember that. Yeah, and they, yeah, they, did yeah. That in, um, they did that in Doctor Who as well, didn't they? Um, in Spyfall. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, Spyfall did it a couple of times. And, and, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, again, and I think it's, you know, yeah, you're right, Fred. It's, it's not kind of, yeah. Mm. So you're, and you're right, Paul, you know, Donna changed so much and, um, you know, had a wonderful arc and stuff. So, you know, forcibly having it wiped was, you know, at the time when I first watched it, you know, I found it, you know, it was really sad, and and it is. But when you kind of, it's kind of look at it, at, it you know, a little it, it bit, felt to me like you know, Russell's just making, and I'm sure it wasn't the case, but it came across to me as like, you know, let's just because it was it's at the end of the Stolen Earth and that's, that's Journey, it, then, yeah. wasn't it? You yeah. know, which is a big, epic, joyous kind of thing, and then we get that crushing. You know, yeah. that crushing end. Plus, also, we get the whole thing with um, Rose on the beach left with the doctor, you know, the other yeah. doctor, which is, Ten which is two, awful. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> I probably enjoyed no. that even less. So, that whole thing is for me, and I know loads of people love that episode and they love those moments, and that's fine. But for me, that is the absolute nadir of the, the first Russell T. Davis mm-hmm. era. So, mm-hmm. And I just wonder if, actually, in the intervening years, you know, whether that's been kind of playing in Russell's mind Maybe. as well. And, you know, I know. Obviously, it was a different set of circumstances that led to David Tennant and Catherine Tate being brought yeah. together. But you do wonder if Russell's then like, okay, so I can pick that up and I can fix it. You know, I can yeah, do something. Yeah, because with it. I was concerned how it was going to be done. I think it was done very well. Mm. Um, and what in, in Starbased? You may think. Yeah, yeah. I think I think yeah, they handled it the nicely. Way. To did you think? You know, well, because you know, I've seen yeah. people online going, "Oh, yeah, this is a." chance to finish off that storyline mm. well the, let's be honest the storyline was finished but this is a chance like <laughs> you said to quote unquote fix it you know mm. and and sort of uh you know carry it on with some kind of plausible reasoning yeah, yeah, yeah. i think rather than just going yeah uh, oh they're back you know uh and and it's forgotten yeah, about there's, there's so yeah, I, for them coming yeah. Back, yeah so mm. I, th- I think it worked quite well and i and yeah. i and i felt it was quite a good um you know, punch the air moment when, um, you know, they were separated by the glass door wall thing. And, um, yeah. you know, she she was, you know, they were working in, it in together. The ship. Yeah, and they, and they had the... Because it, uh, it forces Donna and the Doctor to, 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 to overcome that moment, isn't it? You know, mm, they have to... Yeah. She has to remember... Yes, because he can't go on. He can't operate the controls on that side of the spaceship. No, He's and and he was it. he was uh, you know quite defeated at that point. You know he, he you know I can't mm. do it sort of thing, and he, he didn't want to have to do that to her. But you know, so it was you know I was thinking, oh, what's, you know, what's going to happen? There's obviously going to be a get out, but what's it going to be? So I think it was you know handled quite well, and uh, it was fun to see her sort of you know come back. 
you know, mm. and, and uh, say, I've waited to do this and, you know, flick the switches and stuff. So that, that was cool. I like that. It was very was reminiscent of, um, of of Journey's End, wasn't it? You know, when yeah. we were all sort of dancing around the TARDIS, <clears> flicking <throat> switches and mm. having a good old time of things. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was that. But When you get, like, an experienced companion, they know how to, like, work things as well. It's mm. like they've learned from the Doctor. Mm. Yeah, like exactly. Like yeah. as soon as she came back, she just switched back to who she was just before. Yeah. That's that's exactly it, and you're right, Fred. It's you know, it's like look at Yaz in, um, you know, Flux and stuff. You know, mm. she's piloting the Tardis, and Clara was doing it and stuff as well. And I, I think some people don't like that uh, element of a companion doing that, but I think you know, the more time they spend with the Doctor, it makes the more, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. To be honest, you know, mm. so yeah, Donna coming back in mm. in full effect like that, I thought was great. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. And of course, you know, the, when she gets her memories back, it's not just her who gets memories, it's her daughter who gets hey. memories yeah. as well. So, on that, why don't we talk about Rose? Because Rose's introduction, I thought, was brilliant. So we have the Doctor coming out sort of questioning why does he look the way he is, why is he here, and stuff like that. And he, he, he starts to hear, he, he hears the name, doesn't he? Someone yeah. shouting Rose. Yeah, that, yeah. Which I thought was no, brilliant. No, no, he, he saw Donna. He saw Donna first, and then yeah. yes, and then okay. suddenly it was like Rose, Rose, and he's like, "What? She says you." So it's yeah. like things um, are kind of forcing the Doctor into a in, into a into a confrontation, isn't it? That's going to yeah, be I mean, catastrophic. It's it's a little bit um, a little bit very uh, convenient, you know, what he happens to land in Camden and, and happens to see Donna, mm. and you know, I like the way he, yes. he took the boxes off and then he saw who it was and he, he put the he box put back again, and on. you know, it's like <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm going, um, yeah. but you know, he, he said to Ruth Madeley, you know, I don't believe in destiny, but mm-hmm. you know, if it's coming, so you know, Something's it, working. yeah, yeah it, it works to to bring him in. Also, I wanted to say I was intrigued to see how they started this because obviously mm. um from the end of uh power of the doctor um he has gone into the tardis and had that dalek story that was in dwm oh yeah i just finished reading that today actually yeah um <laughs> and then the there's that at last yeah it probably works better when it would be a collected whole or read in one hit yeah, trying to I'll read it right. monthly yeah. was was uh i yeah, sort of lost what, what was like going on 13 14 14 parts uh, it, it was it's been running a year now i think yeah um and and then there was um <laughs> uh was it called destination scar the, the children in need one so he and then it, oh. obviously here he just landed so they've kind of given themselves a bit of room to uh you know have some solo 14th yeah. doctor adventures again which i wasn't sure how i thought they can't but that kind of works the... i suppose doesn't it because so i think it's fine yeah there's in been between. There yeah has, yes that yes. makes sense um in the, answers... in the mm. doctor who magazine which, which you've got in front of you there actually well actually the the end of that has him going to scarrow doesn't Scaro. it yeah so presumably yeah. he goes to scarrow yeah, crashes into the children in need thing yeah and then goes off and does other stuff, and then finally, and ends then up goes to Camden. Camden. Yeah, yeah. I, I would have been uh, amazed if they hadn't yeah. uh, created some space like that, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's not some space between, mm. um, you know, what happened in uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. this and, and the I, next one. What I like missed about like the first episode of a new Doctor is them being a bit all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they are like mm. not completely with it. It's like boom, boom, yeah. boom, boom, and they're crazy. And I love that bit. And I was just like, I'm not getting it. I don't feel yeah. like yeah. it's like mm. new. I feel like we've just like picked it. I don't know. I felt like I was in the yeah, middle of the series. Kind of yeah, do you know what my my wife said? It it was good. She she liked it. You know, it was it was sort of quite big and quite epic and stuff. But because he was very uh, serious, whereas normally like when this first as a doctor, it's like whoa. Yeah, it's all a bit crazy. Yeah, and he he was a lot more serious. That was, I felt, the main difference between 10 Mm. and 14. Um, He's thrown by having a face again, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Why? Why is this? Why am I looking at him again? So that's quite interesting. Um, But, it it, yeah, if I kind of hit the nail on the head, they did feel a little bit like the middle of a series or, you know, just with a lot more budget thrown at it. Um, it. It was... It, it, it you know it wasn't a sort of and I think mm. yeah maybe you're right it, it wasn't a traditional um, you know post regen story mm. which which is um, you know he's he's you know well into the swing of it here you know um, so that was probably a little bit odd but I suppose then again for a, a new audience you know to have started like that would have been 
even weirder. Why, you know. why is he acting weird? Why is he so weird? Yeah, and also he's only yeah. around for three episodes as well. So you know, you exactly. Kind of yeah, just got just got to get on with it, really. So yeah, I um, how how what's your thoughts on this as a the start of a sixtieth celebration and stuff? How, how did you feel about it yeah, on I that it was angle? Right, I mean, it. I I felt it was. Um, I mean, it has got one big size 10 boot firmly in the past through the star based, really. And, you know, I, I, oh, and, I, I've done that actually. It's one final thing. What I remember is the other kid um, who oh, accompanies Rose. Was, I did this. get very excited because I said, Are they going to call him Fudge? He was called Fudge because he's Fudge in the comic, which is great. Oh, really? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was was that, are they going to keep the name? Gonna... Oh, yes, yeah, they so did. Fudge. That was the actual reaction. Yeah. And he's a sci fi <laughs> geek as well. So that was quite cool. Um, so, yeah, that, that was all right. I mean, it didn't feel like it was massively celebratory in the way that the Five Doctors does or. No. You know, but then it's I, I quite like that because you know every anniversary is going to be different and we shouldn't yeah, always true. do multi doctors we mm, shouldn't mm. always have things done in this way and you know and, and the circumstances that led to David Tennant and Russell T Davis and uh, Catherine Tate sort of coming together you know weren't planned as such no. it was a kind of thing that fell into place and it was it fell at the right sort of time yeah, it, yeah. it answered a specific problem that they had so well it's it's very um you know reasonable that it that it it would have finished with with power of the doctor you know mm. no one else was sort of you know despite no, exactly. what people yeah. say it's you know because it, let, let's be honest you know it's not down to chip and it's not down to our rtd it's not down to moffat because you know the bbc and, and now disney are the ones in in charge yeah, that's it. yeah. so there's a lot of forces kind of there's a lot of forces you know directions. and, and it's not chibnall, together, yeah it's not chibnall or anyone going no, well we're done now it's corporate and if they couldn't <laughs> find anyone if they couldn't find funny. anyone that wanted to take it on yeah you know, I mean, my goodness! A, you look yeah. at the end type, that end card at the end of it now. So it's what was it? Bad Wolf <laughs> Studios and BBC TV Studios yeah. production for Disney and BBC. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's your partners your, right there. Yeah, you know, exactly. Plus, not to yeah. mention the shareholders in in at least in at least two of those, Bad Wolf and mm. Disney. You know, come yeah. from various disparate places. Well, BBC it's, it's BBC, but yeah, I mean, and that's got different arms. BBC Studios is an arm is a commercial arm of a BBC yeah. production arm. I think it's it's worth. <sighs> You know, being aware of the, the uh, you know the different uh, you know factors that go into making this, and you know there tidal is not forces, Jeff. That's how I look at yeah, it. They are it's not one person. Forces. It's not one person in charge of it. No, or, no, you no, know, no. Russell even admitted. Uh, you know, they submitted. I think the first shooty episode, and, and Disney came back, and you know they're like, yeah, the beginning's not working. And, he, and they had to go back and redo it all. So that's the sort yeah. of thing. There's multiple, 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 people, multiple, you know, multiple. Who, who you know, yeah, even even James Cameron gets sent notes. From, yeah, but he's, he wasn't ups. directing this one. Rachel Tulley was directing this one. Yes. who is a fabulous director. She did a load of Twelve Doctor um, stories. Yes, she is very good. Uh, there really is a kind of a sense of. Um, you know, again, more money and scale to this. You know, like the the mm. aerial shots in that street battle, and you know, with, with the good, the right? um the warriors there. I can't say the first name. Rough. Um, you know, huge amount of stuff blowing up and action and stuff like that. And um, you know, she she's got quite a good balance of handling mm. the the comedic bits, the the action moments, uh, and the um the, the more kind of emotive bits as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. she yeah, she she is very good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, we so we were talking about Rose, weren't we? Um, mm, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, um, which which again, now her character is kind of, as it turns out, is more than central to perhaps mm. the third element of this story. So we've got the star beast forming the kind of core plot. We've got the we, we've got the Doctor Donna relationship as kind of the B plot, if you like, or at least maybe that's the overarching framework for for the whole thing. But mm, of course, in mm. this one, we have um, you know we have we, we have Rose. And her and her gender, don't we? She's yeah, yeah. you know she, she she's a trans woman, and we 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 kind of see her as you know she she's abused by some of her friends, right? Yes. And riding down a bike, aren't we? Not well, friends. not yeah, not, not friends, friends, yeah, yeah. yeah. Old People acquaintances. In her school. Well done, Freya. That's yeah. it. Who, or you know, sort of, twats, or twats, as you want to call yeah. them. Indeed, I yes. Know. You know, so I, I mean. <laughs> 
this I felt gave gave the story its real kind of emotional heart and authenticity. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you know this was this was quite a, a big move. I think you know, and it's it's a good thing to see you know that kind of representation put front and center. Yeah. At uh, you know at a popular sci-fi drama show. Would you agree? Yes. Yes. And, well, and it was made. Way, yes. so. <laughs> yeah. And it was made, uh, you know, integral to it. It, it wasn't done, uh, uh, f- you know, ju- you know. Obviously, it was character reasons, but mm. it, it it was more. So it became more exactly, important, yeah. I think, it it, it you know. kind of fed into the resolution of the story, mm. didn't it? Yeah, and also yeah. echoed into the doctors. I loved that they made it like a proper thing, not just something. Kind that's of that's what I'm trying to. to yeah, that's what done. I'm trying to say. It, it was, you know, a, a vital part of it. You mm. know, well, because you asked the question as well, didn't you? Was mm. um, was, was, was like, Rose a trans? I said, would they like make her be a trans character? So mm. I was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure they would. Yeah, I think I'd heard that, that 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 yeah. that was, was uh, like, you know, going to be I was present like, how in they it. Yeah. Do it? Mm. All that stuff. Mm. And it was handled, you know. Quite quite nicely, I thought. You know, it, it was well done. Yeah, it was just, um, and it was nice the fact that it echoed back to the Doctor's situation as well. So the Doctor previously been a woman, mm. now is a man. I like that they said uh, the Doctor is a man, a woman, and both, and, like, and nah, both, and neither. And neither. Yeah, y- yeah, I like yeah. That bit. You like that bit? <laughs> yeah. like that bit. I think um, we'll see more of mm. uh, Rose. I, I will. I must say when. Um, when 14 arrived in Camden and then, you know, he had Rose yeah. and he was going, what, what, what? I thought, Oh God, they've gone straight in with a, with a Rose thing, <laughs> you know, but um, it, you know, uh, I like that. But that's also another like reminder that Donna can remember some. Well, um, yes, that again, that was the, the reasoning behind it. And I kind of want, once that was kind of clear, I was like, ah, okay, yeah, that that's, that's workable for me, mm. you know? Um, of course, Rose but, would have chosen her name, wouldn't she? Yeah. So, but of course, uh, she had the metacrisis moment yes. as well, didn't she? Oh, well, yes. I've, I've thought of something about that. So, um, her kind of. Yeah, actually, I'll come to the other thing I was going to say in a minute. So, when um, I liked mm. that the, the uh, Teddy things that she'd been making were. Yeah. I memories. thought that was now, so cool. Did you? Did, but I, I didn't see that until the end, though. No. Like, because I know there were, they there were a couple very of stories. Recognizable. They weren't no. really. Yeah, exactly. When, I know yeah. when they, the first time we all went into the shed, and the, the meat is sort of saying, like, the, the meat pulls some of them out, doesn't, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, they're sort of looking through. I saying, feel like we do have quite a lot of shots of them, and even when the meat like, starts hiding, yeah. and there's like all but, of them. I yeah, they are quite. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then something like there, it, there at the end, and you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it, it, felt it like, showed the Dalek one, and I was like, is that a Dalek? I like um, the Ood one. The Ood one's good. Yeah, the Ood one's good. One there as well. Well, that, like they're so. Uh, Didymus Holmes, yeah. uh, who we know is a big Calvinista fan, he messaged me and he said, uh, "You saw that too, right?" That's and I said, totally "Yeah." Calvinista, but, like, but then I was, the well, that's why I said to him, "How would she thing. know?" Maybe that's uh, and then I thought, "Oh, maybe it's supposed to be the werewolf." But then actually, of course, that was Rose, not Donna. Mm. And I was thinking, what would Donna have done to have seen, to have seen a, a Calvinista? Yeah. Um, now, also, I thought there was supposed to be a mention of flux in this episode. Uh, there wasn't, was there? Maybe it's coming no. somewhere. Might, might um, be somewhere, but maybe missed it. it. Yeah, maybe I did have the the kids uh, asking questions. Um, <laughs> there you go. So you've got your own <laughs> things. Yeah, so um, I'm good like that. With you, you don't have to be like that. Anymore, I used to have questions. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Why is it? Why? I was nine. She's nine years old. Now, what I was going to say was, I was. Mm. It was a shame we didn't see Bernard Cribbins, um, yeah. because I was, uh, you know, looking forward to seeing his last uh, mm. TV appearance. In fact, I, I told my dad, "Well, you must watch Doctor Who on Saturday." My dad doesn't normally watch it because I said, "Bert, yeah. you know, it's Bert." My dad was very good friends with with Bernard, mm. um, so he's probably watched it and thought, "What is this nonsense?" <laughs> <laughs> and and where's Bernard? Um, but yeah. I I presume because he was filmed. Um, mm. But yeah, it will come later. I something saying that he'd have his last appearance. Mm. I thought yeah, we were going to see Wilf, we'd actually see them and have a nice little like. Reunion. Yeah, so I wonder if they. I think they probably had to rework what was happening slightly, yeah. and now whatever was shot has been shifted to be later or something. Mm. To I, I did think like that might, the yeah. bit when they first mentioned him, and the doctor thinks he's dead, and he gets really sad. He goes, "Yeah, hey, yeah." What? 
dead. <laughs> yeah, because I, I thought, it's oh, got everything he needs in it. So I it's thought, really oh wow, cool. I thought they were gonna, um, you know, they they'd removed him. That, and that's what I thought was happening there. You know, they mm. they were taking that stuff out. So I was pleased that they didn't do that. Yeah, so that, that would be nice to um, look forward to. So yeah, I I really enjoyed it overall. It mm. it, it was um, I mean tonally, it's so different to what. You know, we've had in the Tubinal era, isn't it? it yeah, it's a it, lot it's more. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is not a bad thing. Mm. You know, obviously, anyone who listens knows how much we love the Tubinal stuff. But the um, this is a lot more kind of just felt uh, bigger. I think, as you said, earlier, your blockbuster right? in some ways. Yeah, and I think it's. I literally sort of felt like the TV had grown. Yeah, yeah like, it's the same it? size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, but and you the, know, it's it's what money does you know mm. in in many ways uh it somehow increases the scale it does and i think you know instead of having four uh you know soldiers you got 20 you know yeah, it's that yeah. kind of thing there was a lot and of I, unit soldiers wasn't there I don't think there was a lot of them unit yeah um, her unit wheelchair the unit wheelchair yeah yeah oh, that was the, that the felt quite bond so in a james, james bond having a rocket in it and stuff you yeah know? Um, well, she's and big advisor number 56. fifty fifty. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what number all was. Advisor number one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> yeah, I get bonus points just for even um, meeting you. But I, th- I think that um, I love you that. know it's it's aimed at, at you know a younger audience as well, mm. which which you know I don't think which I think uh, it's great. I think mean, Doctor Who. Yeah, no, I d- it, exactly. You know, like I said, my kids enjoyed it, mm. and you know, uh, I, I I think. Um, you know, tribunal stuff is some of it is you know f- for kids as well. But it, you know, the the show I think was made mm. with an audience that's grown with it yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, mm. and um, and now they're they're wanting to sort of go back again and mm. you know c- capture that audience like my kids yeah, who were yeah. watching yeah. in yeah, two thousand and five. When I was nine, you did, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, and that was yeah, and. Capaldi. and yeah, and I think, you know, because the Capaldi stuff is great, but it's quite dark and it's not kid friendly at well, all. Series, you know. series 10 you started with. Yeah, wasn't I started it? With so, the so that's a bit different. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit different, that, that, that series. And then, yeah. back, and then we went back and watched it all, and I saw Peter Capaldi again. I was like, why is he so depressed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, yeah. you know, it, it was like that, you know, but this this has things, you know, um, the, 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 the kids have been great, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, I remember seeing them. Um, like- childish or anything like I didn't, no, it, no like, it, it, it doesn't like, until you said like yeah. that your kids liked it and stuff i didn't really think oh you know your kids are gonna love this i just mm. thought yeah like, no and and again i think you're right there it, it works for it you know fans like everyone, us it, it does and that's audience of all ages that's it and it's a very hard show to make you know and so mm. there's some bits of this you know like i said my son liked the the uh f- flying you know insect warriors yeah, and yeah. um you know that the girls like beep and stuff but then you know when it got a bit more uh you know into the emotional parts and stuff mm. you know they they well what's going on here and they're not as interested in that uh you know so it kind of works across you know everyone and i think it, it yeah. has to do that as I a think show so, yeah i mean it was almost um, like all the boxes ticked in a way wasn't it yeah yeah so um, <coughs> what did you think of the tardis interior i was going to ask you about the sonic first Oh, the Sonic. Sonic, so Sonic or Tar- let's leave the TARDIS. Let's do Sonic first because well, I've got loads to say about the TARDIS. But uh, let's let's do Sonic first. Go on, indulge me. Uh, it's got we got new powers now. It can create force fields and yeah, it displays out of out of thin air. It's now yeah. even more magic than ever. Yeah, uh, I bet you love that. I love the Sonic, as you well know. <laughs> um, well, do you know, Ashley? I I kind of prefer it in a way doing things like that because mm, then it has a purpose. Yeah. But I do hope that it doesn't just become even more of a get out tool because it's like if it can now create force fields and interactive dis- displays and basically whatever the writer needs, are we going to see it just literally cutting through plot after plot? I think in the wrong hands perhaps you know i think this story had a lot of thought behind it so it didn't yeah. feel to me like sonic was actually out of place it, it kind of worked in the right sort of way and, mm-hmm. it, and it didn't interrupt the flow of the action but i know historically looking at so many stories where the doctor just whips out the sonic waves it around and everything's all solved and it's just mm-hmm. please please don't let's go down that rabbit mm. hole again you know of just constantly shoving this solving every problem with with the sonic screwdriver yeah. and just do my head in i think um yeah it, it was doing a lot more 
but I think it it works in some ways to, yeah, to have it yeah, do I, I it more. I think it can just like make things. Like it can make the glass that he used as like well, not glass, but you know, it was, I think it was just like a force field, field type. But it was yeah. a physical thing. It yeah, wasn't yeah. like it, force it, you know, can be physical. No, but what things. I mean is, when I mm. think of a force field, I think of it like bouncing back off. Y- yeah, they were going through, and they were like making it weaker mm. and weaker until it shattered. And that was that was cool that it it, it did that. And it then he, he um, to say that much. Yeah, it was, very it was good effect. Um, you know the way he excited the wall and it and mm. it broke and stuff. You know, so that was cool. So yeah, yeah resonating the, concrete. That's, right. it, yeah. that's a sonic thing, right? That's the yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that kind of upgrade to it, I think, was mm. was cool. Yeah, I like I liked yeah. all that. Um, okay, so Tardis interior then. You do that. Uh, well, it's massive, uh, obviously, <laughs> huge. Um, spent a lot of money on it. Um, For sure, it, yeah. I really liked the um, the the. the uh, roundels on steroids that were the changing the colour. Um, but oh my goodness! Uh, just looked at our Twitter page. Just, just pulled that up. Um, we got a lot to read out there. <laughs> oh, have we? It's disappeared for me. Sorry, go on. What are you um, saying? Uh, it, I, I felt it was a bit cold. A little bit. Yeah. Mm. I, 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 you I, know, I, I not will as give homely. you that. And that, yeah, I always felt that um, Jodie's TARDIS was very kind of, yeah, homely, warm, and alive. And this is really, um, like, I love the, you know, the the ramps and the running around and all of that. I and like the, the console. The now, well. yeah. the height, I mean, it's it's a couple of levels. Someone um, told us, didn't they, that there were drones? They were using drones. Yeah. Now, I and wonder. Then, and then they shut up. They, they stopped talking. It was like, mm. they did. I wonder who I can't remember who that was, but I, I wonder remember, if yeah. the fact that it's already blowing up means yeah. it might change change for Shooty. Although I don't I know if they've got that money. Yeah, I kind of. It would be nice if he had That's his so own. Big. I'm like, is that like? Did they build that? They built it. I oh yeah, it's, built, it's um, unleashed. It's it is a set. That's crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> clearly you know a, a real set. Yeah. Mm. What um, I so said when we watched it, I was like, I know it's supposed to be bigger on the inside, but that's crazy. That's crazy. Do you know man, what? Actually, my probably... yeah. Uh, my um, yeah. girls, one of them, they, well, they were both really confused. They were going, "It, it was a box. It was a square box." And now, oh, it's, oh, now look at it. I'm bless them. Uh, oh. And they, and Phoebe said, um, "That's so magical," mm. which I thought was brilliant. Magic, you know. Um, so yeah, I thought it looked great. I loved that the, my kids were kind of blown away by right. it. It's, it's what it's should what happen. Should happen. It, yeah, exactly. But I did feel it was a bit too kind of sleek and, you know. Yeah, maybe. I mean, for, I mean, on the one hand, I mean, I've I've always preferred the the more techno light Tardises than the mm. sort of grungy right, organic type keen. things. I, I did. Yes. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I I love Jodie's, and I but I I wasn't that taken with the ninth and tenth Doctor's interior. I thought, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the coral, the brown. I thought that was you know looked like the dog had been sick all over the place or, or something. And I think or the bronze Jules Verne with Matt Smith. I thought that was that was wonderful, but difficult. Yeah, I love that. To yeah. Look at. And then mm, we got that mm. that other Tardis at the end of Matt Smith. But actually, I felt when Matt Smith had it that. TARDIS interior, as good as it was, still felt kind of cold. And it wasn't mm. until they started adding all the books and things for the 12th Doctor that it started to feel a bit more warm. And they yeah. did something with the lighting as well. So we had oranges and glows. And, and also with the 13th Doctor, I felt in Series 11, it wasn't quite the warm place that it became. Yeah, it, it did develop. Mm. Uh, I remember, yeah, with Matt, I loved his second one more than the first um that shot when he introduces it to clara and the snowman and it, you know she goes around the tires and it goes yeah, into the doors upstairs. yeah and he puts hey. his arms out and it all lights up and stuff was, was so cool um but then when you see the capaldi version of it mm. you're like oh yeah that looks looks a lot nicer just it, with it the addition did, of the think, books yeah. and the browns and stuff yeah. you know so this is like living. yeah so this new one is is taking you know a classic Com, you know, console room yeah, and just which you I know love. pumping you know, it full of steroids again. White, so yeah, the white console yeah, room again. The I, I don't dislike it at all. I, you mm. know, I, I think it's it looks incredible, and I and I think it will be able to do. I like a bit of color. I think is what yeah, it is. It, it maybe you know? a bit of something else. Yeah, because that's a problem when you have got a big, vast, wide open cathedral like space. I mean, that's how it was always described in the, yeah, in, yeah. In the target novels. You know, this cathedral like space, and especially if you read. 
um, Doctor Who had an exciting adventure with the Daleks. You know, David Whittaker's mm. first description of it, it's, it's tremendous. And this is one of the few times we actually see that, I think, you know, when we yeah, when pro- we walk properly in. on, on yeah, screen. Yeah, but of course yeah. the downside is, is that there's not an awful lot going on in those spaces. You know, we've got some of those stair, stair walkways are, are fantastic. And we've also got some nice doors that presumably iris out uh, iris open and close in their, in other places which might look even more bizarre but you know again when you sort of think of the eighth doctor's gothic candle interior you know it's just yeah crazy what the tardis can be but that was filled with all sorts they even had bats in those empty spaces yeah and you know the <laughs> grand seal of rassilon above the doors and and ridiculous stuff so this is almost like the complete opposite of that yeah, you know, let's yeah, create a, yeah. an equally big space but strip it out of everything and just put some nice mebia strip stairs in you know the, the spy they don't seem to end those spiral no. walkways they and there's, and there's a lot like of you could start one and appear yeah. on another one without breaking stride and there's a lot of um, doorways in this one, which I, I wonder if more mm. will be seen uh, yeah. in, in it as well. And the console, um, oh, the console looked gorgeous. It yeah. was like it was like the, the old and the new combined, and dials like the old school, and they mm. had the big coffee thing. machine. And yeah, coffee the coffee machine, machine was yeah. like. Uh, you like the, the, I do like they just need machine. um yeah. they just need a custard cream dispenser now, and then you'll be set well, for that's afternoon it. Yeah. tea. It, yeah, creams, coffee machines. Yeah. So it's a total. Biscuit and coffee, in one <laughs> end, isn't it, really? yeah. And then, of course, uh, Donna proceeds to destroy it. So, yes, classic. <laughs> I yeah. like that she was like, Oh, yeah, because that said before, like, Oh, it's not my fault, I lost my job. Okay, it is my fault. It and is then my she gets fault. Yeah. Oh, I should be careful, that's how I lost my job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then it just like massively overreacts, doesn't it, with all yeah. the fire and the flames mm. and everything mm. sort of coming out. I mean, fire and flames are obviously the same thing, but you know, I'm excited. So yeah, I can repeat myself. So, um, flames of fire. Oh, well done. Like you just said, our Twitter um, has been going nuts. So, um, we've got a couple of audio uh, files from people to read out in a minute, haven't we? We um, do. Yes. So, I just want to run through a couple of other things first. Uh, mm-hmm. So that we did a poll. What do you think of the new TARDIS? Oh, Speechless, yes. kitchen, just wow, or meh? And so far, Speechless is, is winning with um, 48.1%. Oh, that's um, good. Just Wow, which is probably the same as Speechless, the same really. Same thing. We can add those two together. So, we, yeah, yeah. We've got 48% so that's, on Speechless, um, 24% on Just Wow. So, what's that? Yeah. Check? That's 68. That's, uh, I don't know. You, you work most that of it. It's Most um, of it. So, we also did big question, who do you think the boss is? Now, it's quite clearly the toy maker, um, but if I end up being wrong, um, then I will admit that. Um, but I do like the fact that a large number of people have said it's Bruce Springsteen. So, yeah. as a fan, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> uh, Fred, Fred, do you know why he's, he, he's called the boss? No. Well, maybe. I don't know. Uh, do you know what? I don't actually know where it started from, so I've asked you that when I can't yeah. really answer Come on, it. Jeff. Um, <laughs> Uh, but that's his nickname anyway. Uh, the, it, is, the boss. it is Bruce Springsteen's yeah. nickname. Yeah. yeah. But someone's also put in there the boss computer from uh, from the Green Death. That yes, Andy that's, that's popped is, up a few times there. Yeah. Like that. yeah. So quite a lot of people have said, I assume it's the toy maker. The toy maker, is that yeah. too obvious? Or it could only be the toy maker because we know the toy maker is coming into it at some point. At some point, and um... the story goes that he got that name early on in his days of the East Street Band because he was the one who got the band's cash payment from promoters every night and divvied it up among the bandmates. Oh, uh, really? No, that's, uh, that's cool. It's well done, Freya. Thank you. Someone suggested the boss could be Jinx Monsoon's character as well. There's a few people suggested that. Um, uh, <laughs> interesting, very Pete Lambert, who's at Prof underscore quite a mess i believe is quite an orphan 55 fan and just put a screenshot <laughs> of the kid for orphan 55 that's who it was yes yeah uh, uh, gavin gone uh also oh, gavin who's uh, yeah. at valamist just says neris <laughs> wouldn't yes. that be a good yeah, good brilliant. twist <laughs> i like this one actually gary hopkins happy 60th doctor who the was... gazzy later has put it's that kid with rose early on who kept watching everything out Fudge. the window yeah. It's, yeah, it was when um, the doctor said to Sean, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'm a friend of Neris," and then went and I was like, "Who are you?" So like, what, what did I say? Oh yeah, a friend of Neris. Oh yeah, I'm a friend of Neris. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That explains everything. Brilliant Disney. The fact he like put. forgot what his cover <laughs> was. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah well done, everyone. I'm points on it. So, mm. pre- yeah, we'll um, we'll go back through later and uh, respond to some of those. So, we Use had a couple of doodles. yeah. So, um, if, if anyone on YouTube is wondering why Frey is not eye contacting with the camera, despite the fact she's Gen Z and doesn't do eye contact anyway, she's been drawing pretty rainbows. I know somewhere over the rainbow. <laughs> well, did do? Did you actually somewhere, write? She did write that somewhere, somewhere over the rainbow. Sorry, Jeff, uh, I interrupted you there. I played knots and crosses with myself. Um, I was just going to read. Yeah. So we asked people for uh, some thoughts on the episode. Um, yes. So Ooh Things Commission's Open, who is at Curiosity Rock, said, I started crying as soon as Rose said non-binary. Mm. It made me I feel so that. loved and in a family and that they stated that the doctor is everything. It's so good to feel my identity is included and valued. Um, And Annie, who's at Annie's musings on, said the doctor is male and female and neither and both and more. Such Mm. a good scene. So nice to have that part of the show now. Love it. Uh, As a non-binary person as as well, it's so special to me. Uh, So that was lovely. Um, Now, Paul, I'm going to let you do the techie oh. side, and would you like to uh, play these little audio clips from some of our listeners? I can with their... try, my old friend. Now, Let's uh, have a look. Uh, IT Paul, uh, right. So I, I will say that... A... I do, and I've got IT issues. Uh, we couldn't use a couple of them, I'm afraid, uh, guys, yeah, they, because... The um, files weren't compatible with us. Yeah, sadly. We, need like, um, we need a WAV or an MP3, and we need them uh, I, uh, emailed to us or, or sent not in... Twitter, Not that didn't Twitter. work, did it? Yeah. <laughs> or but, sent as okay. as a anyway, file anyway. in Twitter. Here we go. So this, if you can hear it, is from James Hadwin Bennett, who's James at Fit Geek. So let's see if we can hear I've been this. a fan of the comic strip for a very long time. And I have to say that I was quite apprehensive about the Star Beast. Mm. Not because of the whole return of Tenant, not because of having to deal with the Dr. Donna stuff, but mostly just because it's the Star Beast. And I'm thinking, we've had the comic strip, we've had umpteen reprints, we've had the Big Finish Big audio finish version. Ball. How are they going to do something new with it that mm. isn't just a rerun of it? And I was really impressed. I thought they got the Meep absolutely spot on. I thought the the transformation, the rocket ships and everything were were absolutely brilliant wasn't too keen on the fact that the sonic screwdriver <laughs> is now basically a magic wand um, <laughs> that just didn't seem quite in the spirit mm. of it It turned it far too much into an easy get out clause, it did remind me of K9 actually, the kind of oh it can solve everything, let's just use K9 <laughs> but yeah absolutely loved it, loved the new TARDIS interior and yeah, yeah. No throw forward to the wild blue yonder, no. and we still don't know why the face came back. We still don't know who the boss is. Still lots of going to be an interesting ride for the next few weeks. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? There, are, there are some nice questions mm. kind of coming out of this. That that's a good yeah. point. I hadn't thought about that. It hadn't had like a next time. Or yeah, so I thought they like might have done. Yeah, for the next yeah. episode. Yeah. No mm. real lead up to it. I mean, there mm. is a trailer out now, isn't there, for Wild Blue? Is it Wild Blue or Wide Blue Yonder? Wild, Wild, Wild Blue Wild Yonder. Yeah, Yonder. A little yeah, there is. There's um, not much to see in it, I don't think. Mm. We also heard from uh, Frosty Mac, so let's have a listen and see what Frosty Mac had to say. Personally, I really, really enjoyed the episode. It was fun, light, airy. Had a little bit of the Russell T. Davies techno battle nonsense in the resolution, but that's fine, you know. We've had that before, we can live with it again. <laughs> um, my biggest issue with it was the slightly awkward handling of the trans representation. Don't get me wrong, I, I really loved how overwhelmingly positive and supportive it was. Like, you can, can I mean, you can tell that Russell really 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 cares he genuinely loves the people he's trying to represent and he's trying as hard as he can that said it does feel like he kind of sci-fied us a little bit you know like a like he provided a like a sci-fi explanation for being trans which i mean it's not the worst thing in the world but it does it, it, it kind of others you know just a little bit it's it's the same reason why sometimes people kind of get annoyed with the idea of the genderless alien as trans representation. 
So, I mean, like I said, it's not the worst thing in the world, and I can live with it. I think most people could probably live with it, but uh, I think you could... You should probably get trans writers in the future to handle the, the, the that that topic. I, I feel that way anyway, you know. Mm. Obviously, there's going to be variants of opinion there, but <laughs> hey. It's a good point. It's kind of what we were talking about the other day, isn't it? You know, we it's, um, when we're talking about representation, in order to get an authentic oh, yeah. representation mm-hmm. in something, you need that voice, you need that perspective, and I think as much as you know, as much as you can be an ally, um, you, you know, a friend, and somebody who's so supportive, and, and as Frosty Max said, they're caring about a certain community. You, it's it's difficult to to represent and write for that or speak on behalf of I that. Hope that they did if you're ask not part of it yeah you know? finney about it a bit mm. like about her experience and if they could like write any of that in or just to help it understand it a bit more yeah they do that mm. yeah, that'd be quite nice yeah uh, but i think yeah I, I think it's a fair comment that frosty max said actually because it's 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 all yeah sort of sci-fying your way out of something yes. is is a is a trap that I think it's easy for for sci-fi writers to kind of fall into as, as much as they may care about representing a community in in the the right kind of way and in a way that gives them you know which, which kind of pulls the, the the validity for it I mean I'm kind of struggling myself because I I don't have that perspective you know mm. and so I couldn't I couldn't really represent that viewpoint you know with with any sort of authenticity um so it's yeah it's it's a good point but i think we'll see yeah. how it goes i think you know like you said yes you know, hopefully they they had yasmin finney's input on you know they kind mm. of doing the right thing how did how did she feel about this and that sort of stuff so because i think we're going to see a lot more representation going through going forward a lot more inclusive inclusivity yes i think which is so. a good thing yeah. you know it should always be yeah. there but not cheapened we don't want to see mm. it cheapened we don't want to see it just being a sci-fi kind of you know explanation for things so i think that's a that's a good point frosty mac thank you for thank you for bringing yeah. that one up yes yeah, th- thanks everyone for, for, yeah that's that was really interesting thanks for um sending in law audio clips for us feel free to do that uh in future just yes, make sure we filed. get them in the right MP3 format files. yeah yeah <laughs> but you need to we, for, for the ones that we couldn't download... Oh, um, yes, you've, you've quoted from, them, haven't you? You've you got them written down there, Freya. Lee Craddock from the Thasmin and... How do you say that? Thasmin and Jarin's podcast, who oh, said... S. I can't even read my writing. <laughs> who said that... <laughs> it's a job, uh, right? I really enjoyed it, and the gender identity was perfectly written by Russell, mm-hmm. and the meat was cute and dangerous. So you know, they thought, um, <laughs> yes, they thought the gender identity was perfectly yeah. written. I think we're going to see a lot of conversations on that, and I hope they mm-hmm. don't turn mm-hmm. into, you know, the kind of volatile conversations that we often see see online. I hope actually I think, it promotes good discussion. I think it was good that it got represented, and it's a nice starting point. But they can't leave their trans representation or there. Like it can't that mm-hmm. it can't be it. There has to be yeah. more going forward. There has it has to keep going because otherwise it's just going to be like oh well we've done that that box that's box ticked. Mm, yeah, thing. yeah. And I'm, I I don't think it will be like that. So. No, but I just, fair not. <laughs> so we've seen a lot of things laid out, aren't we? And um, what did Tony Filer have to say? Because he sent us a file as well, which sadly, sorry Tony, we couldn't we couldn't get it to play. Um, joyous resurrection, everything you'd want in an anniversary special. Makes you want to run around sonicking everything like an eight-year-old. <laughs> and why not? I think that's a that's a perfect reaction to a new Doctor Who story. If it makes you feel like that, then it's kind of it's it's got to be a ten out of ten, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was good fun. I I enjoyed it a lot, it a lot. and yeah. um, I'm um, probably a little bit more excited for the other two because we know almost nothing. Yeah, uh, and the description that they've uh, that um wild blue yonder is is bonkers um mm. and the giggle is doing stuff that who has never done before is is exciting to me mm. so you know my um sort of fears that this is just yeah, two, you were 2000... apprehensive, weren't you leading yeah for, and and i probably well, i certainly said to you maybe not actually on the podcast but you know i'm sure in the end mm. i will enjoy it and and it will all be well and that is what's happened you know um but i'm more excited i think for mm. the the potential of of what's happening you know in, in the next two parts um so we will be back 
left with a review of Wild Blue Yonder, won't we? Um, we will. Might be a but... little bit. Got to avoid spoilers. Yes. To avoid spoilers for, for <laughs> so a few next hours overnight, aren't next we? Saturday uh, mm. is my film festival event, and the three of us are going to be there. Um, We're going to be there, and. Um, we can't hijack the screening to watch <laughs> Doctor Who because we? we did talk about <laughs> it. Uh, I don't. I don't think um, paying ticket holders would be too pleased about that. Um, and by the time it finishes and um, we get home, it'll probably be midnight. Um, so, you, are you guys staying over at the hotel? Yeah, we're staying over. Yeah, we're yeah, going to be okay. there. Yeah. So I, I might. Um, I might watch it when I get in, um, if it's not too oh, late. So you'll see it before so, we will then. That's wrong. That's possibly, wrong. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll be later than that by the time I, I get back. We'll crash um, around your house, Jeff. That's what yeah. we'll do. <laughs> that will confuse We'll go the back kids. with you and we'll just we'll all watch Doc 2 and then the two of us will just crash on the sofa and the floor or something. I'll be already good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There you go. That'll do. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, try to, um, we'll try to get the episode out uh, next. Yeah, um, we'll get we, it. We'll, we've, yeah. We yeah, it. we'll get it out because we we've got yeah. another episode going out next Sunday evening as a mm-hmm. as a filler. I'm not sorry, it's not a filler, but filler? to to filler? put that uh, to get an episode filler? out in our regular. Did you say filler? No, I, I just mean it's filling that regular slot because oh. we know we can't necessarily hit the uh, white wild blue yonder. Uh, yeah, but but before then, so <laughs> thank you very much. And uh, yeah, to everyone who's commented and stuff, we'll, we'll start uh, looking back yes, at some of those. And thank um, you, everyone. we will catch you next time on Who's next Corner's time. Corner. Next time. Next time. Oh, can I just say the piano in the theme? Love that. It was like it was like every Doctor Who theme kind of just laid on top of each other. It's almost like he started with They've one. Really said, Let's put another one on. Video, Let's yeah. put another one on. Let's oh, do another they? one. On. Oh, we can put the Eighth Doctor yeah. one in there as well. And, yeah, go. I'm gonna have to go back yeah. and um, listen to it again. And, It'll uh, grow on me, I'm sure. Simulate it a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Bye for now, listeners. Thanks, and everyone. Watchers. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.